And that's why RFID blocking material built into wallets is a total scam. It really is. But there's a little bit more to it. So anyway. Well, hello. So two years ago, I published a video about the absurdity of RFID blocking that's built into wallets. Over that time, it's created a lot of con I don't want to say controversy, conversation that really deserves a follow-up, so let's get into it. So many were confused with the message I gave two years ago about RFID and wallets. I, I can see how that could be the case, but let me be clear. This is all about wallets and whether or not you need to buy an RFID blocking wallet or not. Now, it's not whether RFID was good or is good. It is. It's great. I use it almost every day along with NFC, another mechanism for near-field communication is what it's called. So it's not about whether your credit card could be cloned. It can, but we'll get more into that a little bit later. So just keep watching here. So with all that's transpired, let's review the following again. Is RFID protection that's built into a wallet necessary? Well, let's hold off on that and address a few things first that will provide context as we answer that question. Now, we really can't answer that question well until we know really how credit cards operate and the types of theft that occur on credit cards. Let's separate the confusion by clarifying a few things. If your card has a chip and a stripe on it, then yes, its information can be stolen via several mechanisms, but it's due to the stripe, not the chip. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So let's talk about cryptography. So let's dive a bit into the different types of stripe and chip and pin cryptography because they're not all the same and they do have relevancy of knowing what you have in your wallet, right? So there is a chip and pin with no stripe, a chip and signature, a swipe and pin, or just a swipe. And it is a sliding scale of security with the chip and pin with no stripe being the most secure and a card with just the stripe being least secure. As long as we have stripes on our credit cards as backup for merchants and terminals that have not converted to a chip reader system, then this will still be problematic for theft of our information. Stripes are the biggest weakness of these cards. Now there are edge cases that aren't related to credit cards, for example with transit cards, access cards, etc., where sniffing could pick up that information, and your concern about that, about whether you want to block that, would be a personal risk evaluation that likely relates to where you live, how you travel, and likely if you have anyone who may want to harm you for some strange reason. That said, again, we're still talking about blocking and whether it's needed in the wallet itself, or you can add it, which you can do. We'll talk about that in a second. So now let's talk about the technology just a little bit. So how did we get a chip anyway? Well, it all started by a consortium of companies lovingly known as EMV, which stands for Europay, MasterCard, and Visa. This is the technology, this pin or chip technology there is made by this consortium and the technology they put there. It's good to point out that the United States has been very slow, a very slow tag along, yeah, slow, that's not good, to adopt EMV technology. So what may be new to the United States has been around since 1994 in Europe. The United States did not start its adoption until 2015. Yeah, that's really super slow. Yeah. But it's a positive sign that as of 2021, the vast majority of merchants in the United States have EMV-enabled terminals. So let's separate the theft we're talking about as physical, digital, and finally, the one everyone talks about, sniffing theft. Physical theft is easy to get our minds around. It happens when either someone you hand your card to jots down your card information, someone steals your wallet, or would-be thieves install or skimmer onto equipment you insert your card into. We'll talk about that. A new method seeing growth due to increasing complexity from chip and pin. Again, it's an arms race type thing. The more protections we put into a card, the more creative that, uh, that really thieves get to try and get that information. Now, as I said, skimmers and shimmer devices are installed on a machine, such as an ATM or gas pump readers that pull all your info from the stripe as it reads the transaction. Again, this is not open air sniffing. A physical reader skimmer shimmer will pick up your integrated communication of the card verification value. That's the CVV or the three digit number you're familiar with from the stripe on the back of your card, along with your card number and expiration date but the new integrated circuit card, that chip there, and verification value, or ICVV, is not transferred, and it's contained in the chip, not on the stripe. So, let's say you insert your, your card into a gas pump that has a skimmer on it. Well, it will read all the information from the stripe of your card, including the CVV. However, if the thief clones the card, and tries to use it in a card present transaction, meaning the thief is trying to purchase something at the local grocery store, the bank will check to check the submitted CVV against the ICVV to ensure the transaction is valid. That's the cross check. 
And so all they can do is swipe it. Well, it's going to require that they put it in. Well, without the chip, there's no cross-check, and if they don't match, the transaction is declined, and there's no fraud risk. However, the gotcha is that there's a small percentage of banks who still don't check the CVV to the ICVV in their backend systems, and as such, that transaction would be approved. Now, if someone tries to use the card information for an online purchase, there are a number of hurdles that we know about when you try and purchase things. It asks for zip code. It also requires you know, shipping information. Uh, gas pumps require zip codes as well. Those are all validations on the business rules and the artificial intelligence on the back end to ensure that it really is the card of the person that's making that transaction. But now remember, it's hard to protect against physical card theft. If a server is going to steal your credit card information at a restaurant, there's not much you can do about it. If there's a skimmer installed on your ATM or your gas pump, there's not much you can do about it except maybe try and recognize it and something wrong with it doesn't look right. Uh, but how often do we really do that? I, you know, Probably we should do it more often than we do. So that's the physical theft regarding the stripe on the back of the card. So can the information on the chip side be stolen? Well, I'm sure it can somehow, but it would take equipment worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to break the crypto and frankly, to crack the key of the receiving systems or understand how you can marry an ICVV number to a CVV. It's just not within reason. It just doesn't make any sense considering you can do better for digital theft. All right. With physical threats taken care of and explained here, let's talk about the largest threat of someone stealing your credit card information. That's digital theft. This is most commonly seen when your credit card company contacts you asking if a recent charge or transaction was you or not. Could be a text, a phone call, any number of those things. I'm sure you've received them. This is so common that my credit card, that before I could even use it once, was charged from somewhere across the country and, and it was fraudulent. As a matter of fact, it really happened last week. It was in Kentucky. Now, I've not been to Kentucky in years. So that was a digital theft. Nobody bumped up to me and did a sniffing or I, it just didn't happen. So how do the banks know? Well, with non-liability consumer protection laws in place, any theft and fraud is now the responsibility of the banks, not the cardholder. Now, this is in the United States and other countries where they have consumer protection laws. So it really helps. But what this does is this means that the banks lose billions of dollars every year in fraud. So they've gone about and built very sophisticated business rules and artificial intelligence to detect fraudulent card usage. They track this behavior. They have cross-data relationships with travel providers, associated banking systems, and your purchase history to build a profile on each of us to know if we're using our card in a way that they'd expect us to or not. Now, back in the day, for example, if you traveled, you'd have to call your credit card uh, provider and tell them that you're doing so, so they would expect that they would receive charges from that country. You're, you're traveling to, but not so today. They already know based on these data relationships, you've uh, scheduled air travel, hotels, and you don't have to do that anymore. They just know. So whether it's your banking institution that suffered a hack or any number of hundreds of stores you've made a transaction with, that information from my last video hasn't changed and continues to be the case. Digitally, that is the largest percentage that you're going to have by way of potential for theft of your credit card information, period. Finally, we're to what everybody wanted to hear about. Sniffing, the sniffing thing. Is, is this type of theft rampant, where people with sophisticated equipment do what's called sniffing? This is, been, oh yeah, fresh, clean, crisp mountain air. Yeah, that's not the kind of sniffing we're talking about. This is where people are standing around you and nefariously slide up next to you and via the RFID NF NFC broadcasting that your card is giving off, they have a receiver that can take that information. And I'm gonna give you an emphatic no. Now that said, can it happen? Well, yes, it's been proven in the lab, but does it happen with frequency that we have rampant RFID sniffing going on or of wallets going on around us? No, not really. I mean, there's currently no data I could find or reporting to demonstrate that open air sniffing is happening in the wild. Well, that's one of the biggest strikes against built-in RFID wallet protection right there. Remember, built-in. But whoa, whoa, are you sure, Mark? Because my friend who had his card compromised on a business trip uh, you know, and all my friends on Reddit, they have friends that they know that have had their card information stolen and it just had to be through sniffing. I'm protected cause I made this hat from aluminum foil. Ooh, so again, it happens worldwide through two primary means, physical theft and digital theft. Really, that, that's kind of what it is. And the last physical theft thing we're talking about is you lose your wallet. We already know that that happens quite often. And when that does, it's a quick call to your bank and cancel cards and they get all that back to you. And even if your card is, uh, let's say it's compromised in some way or another, you know, the biggest hassle 
is that you have to kind of just reset all of your auto pays that you have going on because they're going to send you a new card. So let's come back to the original question. Do you need RFID blocking material in your wallet? Well, let's walk through it. First, will RFID blocking material in your wallet protect you from online hacking? Well, the answer is obviously no. Second, do you need RFID blocking material built into your wallet to protect you from someone stealing your wallet or copying your card information when you hand it to them? Well, that's an obvious no. Third, will RFID blocking material in your wallet protect you from skimmers or shimmers? That's also a no. And finally, are open air sniffers a reality in the world of chip and pin? Not really, not beyond people trying to prove they exist in labs and making demonstrations. So in the world of RFID blocking in wallets marketing, do you really need it? Well, I still say no. And that's why RFID blocking in wallets is still a scam. However, if you're still not sure, please just get an RFID card or sleeve to put into your wallet. This way you can get the wallet you really want. Don't limit yourself to wallets that only have RFID protection. It's not necessary, and when you accept that, a whole new world of amazing wallets open up to you. Don't look for just RFID-specific ones. So I'll keep tracking this technology, and we'll update you if anything changes. And if it turns out to be a bigger problem, I'll be really happy to tell you I'm not here to just stick on a position and die on that hill. So, But in the meantime, don't worry about it. And if you're not sure, just get an RFID blocking card or a sleeve. We'll see you in the next educational video. Bye.